Hello everyone, welcome to another session on how to series. My name is Ayan Deep and I am working as a technical specialist at Ashley. Uh, today I am going to demonstrate a use case on how to aggregate container logs from different data centers in OpenShift for log analysis. As a part of this session, I am going to demonstrate how OpenShift container logs can be aggregated using a global ELK outside container platform. OpenShift has its own ELK plugin. But there are certain factors of improvement like performance, scalability, and also cost of maintaining separate EFK running on each container in each data center. Using an external ELK, there will be one ELK cluster consuming data from all the containers and data centers independent on the container platform. So this is my architecture. As you can see, there are two data centers and FileBeat is installed at node level and as a daemon set. And then there is a patch of Kafka, which will act uh, nothing as a MQ. Uh, that is as a message MQ. And then we have Logstash, which will actually bring more insights on the ship data. And then we have Elasticsearch, which will ingest the data in the form of uh, indexes. And then we have Kibana. So Kibana will act as a visualization tool where we can create visualizations and dashboards. Uh, now let's move on to the demo. As I've already said that uh, FileBeat can be deployed as a daemon set or as a service. Here in this demo, I'm going to demonstrate how FileBeat is getting deployed as a daemon set and uh, in the OpenShift container and how it is getting shipped to the Logstash and to the Elasticsearch. So uh, clearly, uh, I'll show you how this FileBeat uh, YML file looks like for the Kubernetes uh, daemon set for the file bit to run as a daemon set. Uh, so this file name is file bit Kubernetes YML file. By deploying this file bit as a daemon set, we ensure that we are running a file bit daemon on each node of the cluster. Okay, let's scroll up uh, a bit. Yeah, so you can see there are few configurations defined here. That is the kind config map and the name of the metadata, which is filebit config, namespace is keep system, there is nothing but the project name. Yeah. Then comes the data. The data part actually consists of the filebit YML file. Uh, the configurations actually filebit over here. Those are the filebit inputs we have defined as a type of container because the logs are nothing but the container logs. And then we have defined the path, which actually points out to the path where all the container logs are getting stored and the host has node name. The processors, we have defined cloud metadata and cloud host metadata. Uh, okay, now here we have defined the output as Logstash because we are routing this data to the Logstash for further filtering. But we can also route this data to Elasticsearch if you do not want to do any filtering on the data. Okay, now we have defined this kind as daemon set. Uh, so you already know what is a daemon set, I've told you earlier. So that uh, actually uh, uh, we ensure that we are running a file bit daemon on each node of the cluster. Okay, now uh, I'll just skip this part. You can just go through it. Yeah, there is one more thing which we need to mention here. That is the image name, which is very important because it pulls out the image for file bit based on this image name. And we can define the environment variables here. Okay, now there are two types, uh, two basic significant points here to be mentioned that is volume mounts and the mount and the volume. Okay, so Docker logs host folder variable lib var lib docker containers, right? Is it is mounted on the file bit container. File bit will start an input for these files and start harvesting them as they appear, right? So this is how it looks, the container. If you, I'm not going to demo, I mean, not going to details about this file. If you have any questions, you can come back to me later. I'm closing this. Okay, now I'm going to show you how I am going to deploy this Kubernetes file on the container. So there is a command oc create minus f file beat Kubernetes YML file. So once you do this, this uh, Kubernetes or this file beat Kubernetes file is getting deployed. And by default, three workers will be created based on the OpenShift cluster. Uh, so what is a worker? Any node that runs in any container pod or component is a worker node that your subscription must cover. So your subscription covers over your three workers. So it is by default creating three workers. 
So I'm not going to create again because it's already deployed. So it, I so now I'll show who, how this is getting deployed and how it is coming as pods. So first I will do a login into my OpenShift cluster. Yeah, so my, uh, I'm giving my username, password. Yeah, so now you can see that uh, login is successful and we have logged in into the OpenShift cluster. Now we'll show the pods running. So see, get pods minus name and then in the namespace that is nothing but the project name which is cube system so once i run this you can see that file bit is running as a daemon set over here and for each file bit there is one worker sorry there are three workers as defined by the openshift cluster as i already told you and there are all there are also other ports which is running HTTPD, metric beat nginx also okay so this completes my uh, file beat configuration file in the container that is in the running in the openshift version 4x now i'm going to just quickly move on to the log stash configuration where my data is getting shipped for further filtering so i'll move on to my log stash node so this is my log stash node I'll move on to the folder where I have kept my log stash configuration file. So this is the path where my log stash configuration file is situated. This is my log stash configuration file. The input is beats, which I've defined as an output in my file beat YML file in my OpenShift container. Now this is the filter path. So this is uh, one of the most important aspects of Logstash over here. As I've already defined, Logstash is used for creating more insights on the data and also filtering the container logs data. So you can see that all the container logs which is coming from the uh, file we deployed in, as a daemon set in the containers. And we are filtering only the Nginx logs. So the IO Kubernetes container name is actually the, but nothing but the label which is provided to that particular container. And we are filtering only the Nginx logs here. And then we are writing a grok pattern for these Nginx logs and to parse the data to uh, learn more about the grok patterns, you can refer to the grok debugger present in Kibana or you can check it online. I've also added a geo IP filter over here which provides the location details based on the client IP. And the second uh, container level, which I have filtered out is Apache Archiva. And I've written a graph pattern for the same, and I've added a field also. So as you can see here, I am, pass, or I am filtering only the Nginx and the Apache Archival logs. Now then this ends the filter path and then it is the output path where we are actually routing this data from log stash to Elasticsearch and ingesting into Elasticsearch in the form of index. So it is, uh, it is the same as I told you earlier. So here we are checking whether the label name is Nginx or not. And we are just uh, uh, creating an index named Nginx final 17 in the same Elasticsearch cluster. Similarly for Apache Archiver, I'm checking whether the name is equal to Apache Archiva, and we're creating an index for Apache and storing it into Elasticsearch cluster. Similarly, we can also show the other logs, container logs, if you want, in the else part also. Just uh, putting a name to others. Yeah. So this uh, actually ends my Logstash configuration file. So I can start my Logstash. Uh, I just check whether it is running or not. So yeah, it's already running, so we don't need to start it again. Uh, so I'll just quickly move on to the Kibana to show how the index is coming. So uh, yeah, uh, this is my Kibana. And my index name is Nginx final uh, 17. Uh, it's a it's a bit older data I just put in the last 90 days over here so you can see this is my nginx data which is actually getting passed and stored into uh, elastic search cluster uh, you can see these are the uh, container metadata nothing but the metadata coming from the 
container level that is container hash ports uh, then you have this container namespace kubernetes pod namespace my project that is the default project name and you have this uh, container name as nginx over here now you have added this GOIP details, which consists of the location details, Karnataka and the latitude, longitude. This comes from the log stash part. Okay, this is my actual message, which is coming. And now this I have parsed using log stash into separate fields. Like there is response 200, which is coming from this 200. Then you have this HTTP method get, HTTP version 1.1, stream as std out, then you have this uh, client IP, which is coming from the source data uh, and this client timestamp. Okay, so these are the fields which I have passed using Logstash so to get more insights on the data coming from the source. So as you can see, this is basically the data or the enriched data ingested into Elasticsearch and the source is nothing but the container logs. You can see this is the host name for that. OCBC host that is my host name. Okay. Now I'll show the other index which is getting formed. That is Apache Final 17. Yeah. Yeah. So this is my Apache logs data. So can they see the container name? Uh, sorry, uh, the, the, these are the container metadata. And this is my display name, Apache Archiva. This is my container name, Apache Archiva. This is my pod name. And this is my actual message which is coming. So you can see this is my actual message and I have passed this message into this type JVM1 which is nothing but this log level is info log offset and this I have this is the actual error message which is coming from the message itself. Yeah. So this uh, actually uh, shows you the data which is actually uh, you can monitor this data here. Now you can create this date, uh, dashboard out of this also. So I have created a sample dashboard. I have kept it as name as OpenShift dashboard in my dashboard folder. So once I click on this, uh, just need to last 90 days over here. So I can see I have created a few visualizations and then create a dashboard out of this visualization. So this visualization actually uh, demonstrates the various images that is found in all these containers. This is a chart and this, this is actually a bar chart which is consisting of the total number of counts for the events for, uh, based on the timestamp. And then you have this open shift streams. Basically this I've divided into whether it is standard out error or sorry, standard error or standard out. And this is based on the response code. I think there's only one response code. So that is why it is showing only one color. And then this is the number of logs count in the operation based on the timestamp per day. So yeah, yeah, actually this ends my demo part. Uh, now just to jot out or just to summarize out what I have done over here. So basically I have demonstrated as I've shown you, uh, 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 the file beat is deployed at uh, as a daemon set and it is, it, it is shipping the data for the container logs data basically to the ELK outside the container platform. So why, um, why are we using it? Well, what are the value additions for this architecture? So this actually removed the dependency of ELK on the container platform so that it can, um, which actually ingest data from the various multiple data centers and like consolidated into one ELK platform it actually is very minimal cost because we have only one ELK platform. Then this also consists of Logstash. Logstash actually increased the features of using about two, uh, about uh, increase the feature of using more than 200 filter plugins. And it provides numerous business insights on the incoming logs very easily. Uh, the next one is like it provides a highly scalable and resilient architecture and without interfering in the respective containers. And of course, if any change in the container, which does not require any change in the ELK as it is independent on the container. And Filebeat, which is actually a data shipper over here, is very lightweight and it consumes very less memory based on CPU and RAM. And the last would be like this platform can be used as a service everywhere when a container is added or not. And it is to be used. So that's all from my side. Thank you for listening to me. 
so that's it for today guys um, thank you so much for watching the video and i hope you find it informative if there's any particular topic that you want us to do a video on you let us know and we'll get it for you we'll be happy to do that and um, make sure you hit that subscribe button because uh, with all your awesome support we can keep bringing you more stuff and every time a new video comes you will know because it'll pop on your screen thank you so much have a great day Thank you.